So I'll be looking at tools for building a great marriage or slight family. They don't wish a great family. So what are the tools I need to have to build a great, a great marriage, a great family? Number one tool is communication. Is what? It's communication. God Almighty loves to talk. That's why communication is important. He is a talker that he called himself the word. He loves talking. He still talks. So to a point, because of how he talks, he said, I am the word. I talk. I don't stop talking. He calls himself the word. I love to talk. Talk is part of me. He communicates. God is still communicating to you today. To what? To a point he calls himself the communicator, the word. Communication is the act of passing across something. If you have not passed across something, you have not communicated. You're only talking. Any relationship without communication will die. And I pray that your family and marriage will not die. Amen. You have to develop good communication skills. Learn to listen. Be truthful. Know when to talk. There's timing even in talking. You don't talk at the wrong time. You may be saying the right thing, but saying it at the wrong time. In Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 23, the B path, it said, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it? A word spoken, so be open to correction. Be open to what? Be open to correction, complication. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, shall we read together? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Shout hallelujah. So let your words bring joy. Let your word not bring depression in the heart of people. Have you ever spoken to someone and the person feel like dying that day? That is not communication. You have led the person to depression. Every word of correction should bring joy in the heart of people. May God give you understanding. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. There is no marriage or family that can be successful without proper communication. But here is an hear me well. There are three main killers of communication. Three main what? There are three killers of communication. Number one is explosion. Is what? Explosion. It has to do with hunger. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28, it says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. See the scripture that changed me. Even if you're angry, I can tell you how you will overcome it today. This was a scripture that turned me. I used to be very angry, demonic anger. I used to have a demonic anger. This scripture I'm about to read is what turned me. It was a scripture that brought me out of anger. Shall we read Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9? Look at this. Shall we read together? Want to go? Be not hasty in the spirit to what? For anger rested in the bosom of fools. Every time you're angry, you're a fool. You're a what? Fool. Big fool, and the fool dies before his time. So when you are angry, that's why Moses, with all his anointing, died early. People who get angry don't live long. Read your Bible. Men have this problem. When I saw this scripture, I meditated on it. Am I a fool? I'm not a fool. So why do I have to? I can pass my message without shouting. Must not make go and, go and, go and tear down the roof before I pass my message. You don't have to tear down the roof to pass an information. You don't have to explode before somebody will understand what you're saying. If you don't control your temper, then you are a fool. And we are not fools. 
So every time you're angry, tell yourself, am I a fool? Did somebody get what I'm saying? Yeah? Turn your anger in a positive area. Be angry with the devil, not with people. Be angry what? He said, let your anger not go beyond the sunset. These days, women also have it. Anger can lead to fight. Stop screaming when you enter your children's room. Remember, they are children. We're talking about marriage and families. Once you step into your children's room, no matter how angry you are, you calm down. Because that is not an environment for children to see that. Don't scream at your wife where your children are. You're letting down your wife or husband. So here. Are you getting what I'm saying here? The second destroyer of communication is tears. Is what? Tears. Speak out what you want. Stop keeping quiet and be crying. It's a destroyer of communication. Nobody reads what is in your mind. Women are more into this. It's a killer of communication. Say what you want. Stop crying. What is wrong? You are crying. What is the matter? You are crying. What are you crying for? <laughs> you are just crying. You say, what is wrong? <laughs> what is the problem for goodness sake? <laughs> say it out. Say it. It leads to depression. This is what? Most depressed people are people who refuse to say out something and they kept crying. Before they know it, they go into depression. I command you free from it. It's a demonic spirit. It's a demonic spirit. God has not given us such a spirit. It's called the spirit of heaviness. God's spirit of what? Crying comes with the spirit of heaviness. You just stay like this, the atmosphere just make you thick. He said, I have not given the spirit of heaven. It's a demonic spirit, and I cast it out now. Yeah. The moment you start crying without talking, you have entered the spirit of depression, which is the spirit of heaviness. You just say like this. He <laughs> said, what is wrong? It's a satanic spirit. It's a satanic spirit. It's not of God. Command you free from it. Amen. Women are more here, you know that. <laughs> Even men do the studio. <laughs> Some men too cry that. He said, My husband, what is wrong? <laughs> My friend, you, that man is in trouble already. <laughs> you are free from that trouble in Jesus' name. Amen. He's a destroyer of communication. Hmm? Hebrews 12, verse 15. He said, look in the list, any man fail of the grace of God, list any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be what? Defiled. We are talking about the spirit of what? Heaven. Please, tears bring spirit of heaviness. Isaiah 61, verse 3. The sea, killer of communication is silence. Is what? Is silence. Silence leads to resentment. Silence Always waters the root of bitterness. I like to keep quiet. It's not godly. It's demonic. It's a destroyer of communication. It's better you say something than you keep silent. Everyone you see silent is destroying communication. So what? If God is silent towards you, you will die. Talk it out. Don't expect others to read your mind. How do you think that they should know what you're going through? Say that you, uh, I mean, I don't like talking. If I talk now, there will be trouble. They should read your mind. They should read your mind. Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against, go and what? Did he say go and keep silence? Go and tell him what? Between thee and him alone, don't go and be shouting to your neighbors. You are keeping silence, but you are calling people on phone. Listen. You are keeping silence to your husband, but you are calling your relations. Listen carefully. This is what the Bible said. Tell your husband. He said, I don't want to talk about that, but you're busy calling your sister, you're busy calling your brothers, you're busy calling your mother, you're busy calling your father. Then you're not silent. That's a distraught communication. You're busy calling your mother as a man. He said, but I don't want to talk to my wife. But you've called your mother, you have called your sister. You are not silent. This is what the Bible says. Go and tell your spouse what is wrong. 
You say, I don't like talking, but you have called everybody. You don't understand Bible at all. You are not silent then. You are dangerous. You are not silent. If you are silent, God said, go and tell who him alone. He didn't say, go and call other people. If he shall hear thee, that's gain. It's the only one who does not hear thee, you go and tell your pastor. Not even your relations. So I hear. These three weapons are killers of good work. Communication. Never use any of them if you want a home, except you want a house. Say it as it should be, without using any of these three. Without using any of these three. A word of I love you, I'm sorry, I appreciate what you have done, can solve problems faster than any other two. Stop nagging all the time. Never complain or criticize your mate in public. That's not communication. That's not what? No matter the mistake, you don't shout at your mate in public. Love others, no matter their mistakes. So I hear. He said, that's how he behaves. Talk to him privately. That's how she behaves. Talk to her privately. Don't talk and shout at your mate. Your spouse in public. Stop that! Stupid woman. Where people are. You don't know communication. You don't know what? Once there's a third party, control your temper and say it properly. So I hear. Learn to love. Learn to what? Learn to love. Learn to love. Learn to love. Learn to love. Ooh. Ooh. Learn to love. Love forgives. Love cares. Love listens. Love protects. And love gives. If you want your marriage to work, then be on the giving side than on the receiving side. The reason why many don't know about love, we are always wanting to receive. If you want to walk in love, be willing to give. The giving side of love makes marriage to work faster. Put yourself on the giving side and on the what? Receiving side. When the husband gives, the wife gives, love will just grow fast. Don't say, can't he love me? Say, I have to love. Two of you, give. It's more blessed. So don't see blessed to give all on money. It's more blessed to give love than to receive love. Don't read the Bible only for money. Is that true? So I hear. Hmm. He said, Ephesians 5.25, husbands, love your wives. Is that true? <laughs> you know, we always see love only on men. You hear this? He told women to, to love their husbands. From the same Bible. He said, husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He is a lover. He's a giver. That kind of love is called sacrificial love. Jesus came to give. In Titus chapter 2, 4 and 5, that they may teach the young women to be what? To love. So love is both sides. It's not on one side. Hey, hey, it's not only your husband that will give love. You do give love. What do you give? Give, 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 give. your children. Give love to them. Someone get what you're saying? Your love for each other should be unbreakable. Should be what? That is why there's no beginning and ending in the wedding ring. You know why they call it wedding ring? No beginning and ending? If you see every other ring, they must break it. 
It's only a wedding ring, it goes in cycle. The meaning is the love you have is all um, breaking. Every ring you wear must have a break. The only ring that has no break is faith. They are trying to pass a message to you this love is all um, breakable. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. He said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be what? One flesh. One flesh, you can't break death. That's the meaning of love. You know why the Bible calls it one flesh? You can't break one flesh. So, husband and wife, love means you can't break it. It's unbreakable. If you are one, can you, can you break one? One in one is what? Marriage is not one plus one. Marriage is not one plus one. Marriage is one. And one is one. Marriage is not two people. Marriage is two in one. Marriage is one and one. Not one plus one. That's why you can't break the law. So here. Mm. Same thing. But hear this. Love is essentially a matter of the heart. It only finds expression through your mouth and actions. If it's not from your heart, the love will not last. Any love that will last, where will it come from? From the heart. Then you give expression through your mouth and then with your actions. But if your love is not coming from the heart, it's fake. There is a reason why many people do the opposite to their wives. Do the opposite to their spouse. Is because the love never came from the heart. When it comes from the heart, everything you do, you have reservation. When a woman, for instance, calls her husband and talk beyond the boundaries, she never loved him. When a man begins to say confidential things, he never loved her. Whom you love, you have a boundary. No matter the offense. Hmm? When you see a man say, my wife, useless woman. She did all this. You wonder, whom you love, you draw lines. You draw, even when the person offends you, you have a boundary. When you see someone talk, wow, wow, love was never involved. Love that comes from the heart. You don't talk like that. Mm? Someone get what I'm talking about here? Glory to God. Mm? But out of the abundance of the heart, the mad what? So let your heart be filled with love and toss. With what? Love and toss. I love you is missing today in today's marriage. People don't say I love you anymore. Compliment your mate. Love by action. Get up in the morning and look at her. And look at him and say I love you. Don't tell the man that you tell the woman. The woman should tell the man too I love you. The man should also tell the wife what? Woo! You hear what I'm saying? That's what God said. Don't do as if you are not hearing what God said. Mm. Love by action. Love by what? Action. First Corinthians 13, 4 and 5. The TLB version. Now it said, love is very patient and kind. Love is what? what? Never jealous or envious. Never boastful or proud. Verse 5. Never what? Haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. <laughs> that, if you love, some people say he gave a love portion. It's a lie. When you love, you don't see false anyhow. Anytime you see people say, I, I see this false, I see this false, he never loved the person. When you love someone, you don't see many things. That does not mean you're stupid because love covered a multitude of sin. Anyone you love, even in the natural, you don't see the fault of the person. Anyone picking every fault around you, love for me. <laughs> love is finished. When you love somebody, you don't see what others see. And it's whom you don't love, you begin to find fault. 
when somebody begins to pick on the spouse, my wife is this, my wife is that. I don't mean you can't correct, don't misquote me. Love is no longer there. Love hardly see what others see. Verse 5. He said, it is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges. And will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. Do you hear that? Even when the person makes mistake, you wouldn't notice it because of love. Am I the one that wrote the Bible? Okay. You are looking at me as if I'm talking my own. Mm. But did I say you should love? Does not mean you cannot correct you. Don't balance the Bible. Before he said, said uh, in love, so you don't know. I never said so. But you do the correction with love. 